places. All right. The dream began in 1989 when Marty McFly put on his self-lacing Nike mags in the movie Back to the Future Part 2. Here we are 30 years later in 2019, and I have a pair of Nikes that self-lace, although they're not the mags. Those came out in 2016, but more on them later. Regardless, ladies and gentlemen, the future is here. The shoes I have are the Nike Adapt BB, short for basketball. These are basketball shoes. When you put your foot inside the adapts, the capacitive sensor on the top of the lacing engine detects pressure, and the shoes will quite literally lace themselves. There are two buttons on the outside of each shoe. The back button closest to the heel loosens the shoe, and the front button will tighten. And they make this really awesome two-note sound. It's an E-flat and F. And that's by design. During All-Star Weekend in Charlotte, I sat down with Jordan Rice, Senior Director of Nike Smart Systems Engineering, who told me a lot about the adapts. Among the many things we discussed, he told me that a Principal Systems Engineer at Nike sat down at a piano and fine-tuned the rotational velocity of the motors to produce the sound at those particular pitches. After all, the original pair sounded like this. <laughs> The adapts come in an oversized yet thoughtfully designed shoe box. Inside you've got the shoes, a power brick and USB-C cable, the Qi standard charging pad, and a quick start guide. Setup is relatively quick. Start by downloading the adapt app. And yes, I'm aware of the bugs on Android, but I'm on iOS, so I didn't really have any issues. The only speed bump here was the software update right out of the box, but it's a tech product, so it's almost expected. Once the app is downloaded, you go through the setup process that involves pairing each shoe to the phone and calibrating the kicks by wearing them for the first time. The sensors work their magic and will create your default fit. And from then on, whenever you put on the shoes, they'll tighten up to that point automatically. The app has a super simple interface. The L and the R correspond to each sneaker and you simply drag the letters up or down to tighten or loosen. Tap the light once to cycle through the dozen color choices of both the app and the lights on the shoes. And you can press and hold for the full grid of color choices. I am really into this Aurora green. The middle button is your battery indicator, and the button on the right is one tap to loosen the shoes all the way. Inside the settings are options like software update, preferences like recalibrating your shoes, for example, but nowhere to be found were the presets. The pair I tried at All-Star Weekend gave me the option to save a specific fit, but I imagine it'll be back in a future software update. And speaking of software updates, I really wish Nike gave the option of leaving the lights on indefinitely. They turn off just after a few seconds. They could easily push an over-the-air software update, but I know that'll probably drain the battery quick. As far as I'm concerned though, lights in your shoes is the wave. And if you're curious, you can't exactly over-tighten the shoes. When the shoes are all the way laced, you can micro-adjust them little by little, either using the app or the shoes themselves. But there's a software ceiling that the shoe creates when you calibrate them for the first time. As in, they'll stop tightening after a certain point. And before you leave a comment about the batteries dying and your foot getting stuck, the shoes are smart enough and they'll automatically loosen before the battery dies completely. Nice try, trolls, but Nike just owned you. The shoes are packed with smartphone-grade technical components. A battery, Bluetooth radio, various sensors, and the redesigned motor and lacing system. The laces themselves aren't traditional shoestring. They're similar to parachute cable. The upgraded design structure makes for a really tight fit on both the top of your foot and around your ankle. Nike says the batteries will last about 10 days, and so far so good for me. In my few days of testing and wearing them, I've still got over 70% in each shoe. To charge them, you simply drop them on the charging pad and the induction goes to work. The shoe itself is cool. It's got an icy sole with a butterfly imprint. Most of the shoe is constructed with this sort of woven micro mesh material that hides the lacing system. The shoe tongue is noticeably long, probably to help get the shoes on. The Nike swoosh can be seen from just about every angle, and that big swoosh is 3M. 
I'm into the adapt branding on the tongue, the heel tab, the extension of the swoosh, and of course the buttons themselves. The dots sort of symbolize the motors tightening and loosening the laces. From the outside, you really can't tell that these are electronic shoes. And the adapts are surprisingly light for having so much tech inside. Price told me that the shoes can withstand water. You know, one of the reasons we started with basketball is because if you solve for basketball, you pretty much solve for everything else. So when you talk about waterproofness, you gotta make it withstand sweat, durability, side-to-side uh, -side lateral movements, you know. Just like hardcore wear and tear. I'll say this though, because they're basketball shoes, they've got a very snug fit meant to keep your foot locked in there. I had trouble getting the shoe on my foot even when they were all the way loose. In my few days with them, I've sometimes preferred to not have them quote unquote tied at all. I'd say you could probably get away with going a half size up in these. I'm a size 10 and these are a 10 and I don't necessarily need to make these any tighter than they are by default as in no tightening at all. If I were to play basketball in them, I'd definitely tighten them. I did so during All-Star Weekend. The Adapts are definitely a cool looking shoe that you could totally rock on the daily, but I'm actually a fan of the Hyper Adapt 1.0 silhouette better. To help me explain why, my friend Blazendary came through with his pair. Yes, You've had this pair of shoes for how long? So I had these for what, it's been about a year since it came out now, almost a year and a month, something like that. And walk me through, cause this is the original pair. This is like the consumer version, right? So what are the differences between these two? Well, I mean, for starters, the technology in these sneakers right off the bat is completely obsolete compared to these in mm -hmm. terms of the way the lacing system works. And I mean, aside from that, there's a bunch of like aesthetic differences too mm -hmm. that really just kind of, in my opinion, make this shoe look a little worse because these aesthetically are a little better. Mm -hmm. I like the silhouette that they put these on. I think that this design with the fly knit and all the different colors on there looks really cool compared to this. Like, yeah, it's a basketball sneaker, so it's gonna be a basketball look. I'm personally gonna wear it out on the street, you know? Mm -hmm. So I see myself with this kind of sneaker, you know, the more chunkier, I guess you'd call dad style, right? Yeah. Maybe even a little less than dad style. The lacing is like a big flaw about this sneaker, in my opinion. There's it's like two buttons in there that you can't even really see them. Um, the noise is a little strange, but those lights are really sick. The new adapts don't have those lights on the back or the light on the bottom. And that, what is that light on the bottom, GC? So um, this is like the light, a very similar light that they use in the Nike mags. Mm -hmm. And the lighting on this is like- Just, just like, in the buttons. Just like little LED buttons. I don't and know why they got rid of the lighting in the back either. They kind of dumbed down the lighting system a bit. Like there was super cool dope lights on the back on this one. And this is just, Two, Just little, in the two little dots. But the the I think kind of the worst feature of the originals was the way it charged. These little pucks are a no go. Yeah, Ready? so the, the, look, way, look you, at the that. way you charge the shoe was with this little charging puck that kind of just stuck on there. And you couldn't really put the shoe down. And then they were both, it was like super tethered to the whole thing, right? This is how you, and then you plug it into USB in a wall, um, just kind of really impra impractical. One could argue that Nike has been trying to achieve the dream of self-lacing sneakers for 30 years. That dream became real life in 2016 when Nike did the self-lacing mags in conjunction with the Michael J. Fox Foundation. A mere 89 pairs were produced. They took that same technology and incorporated the self-lacing system dubbed Earl Electro Adaptive Reactive Lacing into its first consumer self-lacing shoe called the Hyper Adapt 1.0s at the very end of 2016. Throughout 2017, Nike issued the 1.0s in a variety of colorways. And now in 2019, we've got the Adapt Basketballs, but only in one colorway right now. I want to point out the naming convention change here. The pair I have are Adapt BB for basketball, not Hyper Adapt 2.0s. Nike changed the branding to allow themselves to do an Adapt line of shoes, Adapt SBs, Adapt Trainers, Adapt Running, etc. We designed it as a platform. Okay, that cool. platform can be dropped into a lot of different types of shoes and categories. Because, because this is like the first, the Adapt BB basketball, right? Like, it, there could be a future that a running Adapt shoe exists. You've made it this far in the video and we haven't talked about pricing yet. To give you perspective, the 2016 mags have sold at auction for upwards of $100,000 the first pair of consumer self-lacing Nikes, the Hyper Adapt 1.0s, retailed for a whopping $720. The Adapt Basketballs cost less than half of that, $350. Yes, 
That's expensive for a pair of shoes for most people, no matter how you slice it. To me though, it's the cost of being an early adopter. I happily gave Nike my money for these and will be paying close attention for new colorways and future releases going forward. I'm going to wear my pair as everyday shoes to see how they hold up over time and what sort of software updates they get. If you want to see a follow-up video, definitely leave a comment letting me know. These are the cutting edge of technology and sneakers, and Nike is leading the charge. Subscribe to my channel if you're new around here, and check out Blazendary's video and give him a sub if you like what you saw. Thumbs up if you learned something, and thank you for watching. <laughs>